So today I want to give you a full demonstration of the amazing capabilities that we have got with the Fixture Builder in the newest release of FastSuite Edition 2. I'm going to show you how the Fixture Builder can enable you to take a completely new work piece, create a fixture for it, program it, and weld it apart all within the same day. This is a complete game changer because usual fixtures can take weeks, sometimes months to be processed, and this allows an extreme flexibility in the process. So I want to take you in the whole road of how do we create these fixtures, how do we make modifications to the plates, how do we create supports, how do we make sure that the instruction is easy, and many of the different tools that are available for you with the Fixture Builder in FastSuite Edition 2. And we're gonna show you an application with a covered welder because many of our clients are finding very useful, even for small shops, to have Fixture Builder where they can process all kinds of different parts, small batches, constant changes with all the flexibility that you need to work and with an incredible return on investment. So let me show you first a demonstration here. I'll walk you through the process of the creation of the fixture and then you can see some of the application. So to begin, I'm gonna change here to the Fixture Builder Workbench and I'm gonna import my workpiece. I'm gonna select in the top here, Import. We can bring any kind of uh, CAD data file. In this case, I have my part as a step file. And so I'm just gonna grab it, drag it and drop it. And before I drop it, I'm gonna press the W key in the keyboard. I'm going to release and this is going to know automatically this is a workpiece and it's going to create all the reference and everything that we need and we can begin with the fixture creation. First step, I'm going to change here in the microenvironment to create or edit fixture and the reference that I have is actually pretty good because if I see sideways, it's a little bit under and this is where I want to begin the construction of my fixture. You can also notice the manipulator is shown here automatically in the origin and I'm going to take the manipulator and I'm going to drag it and drop it in the place where the frame is for my workpiece. We can then select the workpiece and then right click in the center of the manipulator and select create fixture. This is going to create a fixture with the reference that we're giving it with the manipulator in place. But we want to have to align these plates exactly where we want them to support our workpiece. To do this, we can simply right click in any of the plates and select move support plate. We're going to get a simpler version of the manipulator that will tell us what are the allowed movements for this plate so we can move it a little bit to the side. However, another way that is useful to do this is by simply aligning it with some of the features that we have already in our workpiece. For example, in this case, I want this plate exactly under this other side support plate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go a little bit under to be able to see this line in here. I'm gonna right click in the center of the manipulator, picking commands, pick center point, and then I'm gonna select this line in here. This works uh, with the center lines or with anything that it has a feature as long as it's not in the extremes of the part. So not on the outside or not all the way to the top. And you can repeat the same procedure on the other side. So I can go a little bit like this, right click, move support plate, right click in the center, picking commands, pick center point, and then select this other one on the side. In the same fashion, we can get the two plates in the middle to do the same, move support plate, here, picking commands, pick center point, and then we can select one of these points. I'm gonna do exactly the same on the opposite side. And now we have four plates aligned exactly where we need them. One thing that I must notice is uh, if you go to the top, you can see some vision like that. If you do not see exactly this, uh, you might wanna go to the settings and then change your camera projection to orthographic. This makes the modification of the plates uh, way more simple for the fixture builder. The part looks very similar to the color right now, to the geometry that I have. So one thing you might want to do is to change the color of the part itself. And to do this, I'm gonna to go to the geometry mode. So in the top, geometry mode, I'm gonna double click in my part, and then I'll right click on it, and then select here the material picker. And I'm gonna change it to something that is more colorful. Let's say something like bright orange. I click on the empty and then we can differentiate very well in between our plates and our workpiece. To finish this, I'm going to go simply back to the normal mode. Next thing, I'm actually going to add some extra plates in here. So what I'm going to do is uh, from this point, I'm going to set this as my zero location. And then I'm going to go a little bit to one side. So for example, here, 50 millimeters to one side. And then on the X direction, I'm going to go to the sub menu to create a plate that goes across all the entire fixture. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I'm gonna jump to minus 50 millimeters in my manipulator. Here, I'm going to select add support plate. Same idea here, but in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go back here to the zero. We can press escape and the manipulator always jumps back to the zero. Here, I'm gonna go now um, in the X direction, let's say 80 millimeters. And I'm gonna create a plate that goes here. 
and then now to minus 80 millimeters and I'm gonna create another plate that goes somewhere here all the way across I want to increase the size of the base plate so I'm gonna right click on the base plate and then select resize base plate and I'm gonna make this 800 millimeters by 500 millimeters I want now to restrict how this fixture is landing within the plate so I want to add some kind of stops we call them flanges all around the fixture so it's hold in place when we're welding it to do this I'm gonna go now right here to the fixture parameter on the right then plate design and there is a section where it's support plates with flanges I'm gonna enable this and I'm gonna then update my fixture now we get flanges all the way across and we are limiting this completely so there is no motion uh, allowed for our fixture. I'm going to split the support plates. I'm going to right click in the base plates and then select split a support plate. This is going to uh, trim them exactly to what is only needed with the next axis that is available. I'm going to repeat the process here in the middle with all of the plates here and here. Then during the welding process, um, we can see that this part is going to have some levels of deformation because of the heat and it needs to somehow breathe and move. So at the moment we are restricting 100% the form of the part. So every single plate has flanges on both sides. So I'm going to add a couple of stops here for one support plate here on the side and also for uh, these tubes also from the side. And then we're going to trim some of these flanges. To do this I'm going to go to the library. Here I have prepared a couple of clamps. And I'm going to use this spring load to stop. I can simply drag and drop into my station. And to place it, I can go here to the drag and snap mode, select the component, and then uh, we can simply drag and drop into any of the surfaces where we want to make the stop. And then we can align here using this arches to double click and then align to any direction that we want. And then I need to add another three of this. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to put Ctrl C and then Ctrl V three times. I can then place them more or less where I want them. The next one is going to be aligned more or less here. So I can also use the picking commands, right click in the center of the manipulator, picking commands, pick mesh, and then select any point. And the other two follow exactly the same procedure. So now we have the different stops for each one of the elements. The stops will help us to relieve some of this pressure. So that means that I do not longer need some of the flanges here on this side. And I also do not need some of the phalanges on that side. One more thing that I'm going to change is uh, since right now we have some extra feet in each one of the plates. Uh, these are not desirable because we're going to have a lot of parts coming in here, especially when we add the towers. So I'm going to go into my fixture parameters and then uh, plate design, total extension length. And here I'm going to change this to zero to delete these extra feet that are on the bottom. I'm going to then update the changes. Then I can start manually modifying some of these flanges. I can go a little bit on the side view, gotta make sure that we're back into our normal mode. We can press escape to bring the manipulator back, then right click in one of these phalanges and then select resize support plate. And I can just bring this all the way down so we can have here a flat surface on this side, same on this side, same on this side. But in this side, I'm actually gonna have to make it shorter because otherwise it's gonna collide with the stopper. So I'm gonna make it somewhere around here and same on the other side. For the back, I'm going to do something very similar. Again, reset the flanges. I'm going to go down and down. So flanges down and then once again down in here. For the sides, I'm actually going to shorten this because we have a round edge in here and we don't want them to come all the way until here. So uh, I'm going to make this a little bit shorter. I right click on the bottom and then select resize support plate. And then I'm going to bring it very close to the end. Same on the other side. Right click and some more or less in there. I'm gonna repeat the same procedure on the other side. And next thing I want to add some clamp towers. To do this, we already have a reference for each one of these stops. I'm gonna bring the manipulator, drag it and drop it into my reference in here. And then I'm gonna right click on it and then select add tower. This tower I already know is got to be a little bit smaller. So it's gonna be 40 uh, millimeters in length by 60 millimeters in width. We have not calculated the base plate. We might have to do it manually. One thing that is necessary though, is we need to add the holes according to the geometry of the clamp. So I'm gonna press escape to bring the manipulator. I'm gonna right click in the manipulator, center, picking commands, 
pick center point, and then I'm going to select this circle. Then on the top plate, I'm going to right click, select add fixing hole, and I'm going to make a fixing hole here of seven millimeters. And you can see it from the top. Now we have a small fixing hole. I'm going to repeat the procedure with the other hole. Picking commands, fix center point. We have this one. Then we make a hole seven millimeters. I can just duplicate the tower. Then I'm just going to press escape to bring the manipulator back in place, drop it in the reference of the second clamp, right click in the tower and then select clone tower. Once again, for the one in the back, manipulator in place and tower, clone tower. And once again, here in the front, manipulator, clone tower. One more thing that I want to do is I want to add uh, some kind of text or marking into this one. So I'm going to bring the manipulator here on top. I'm going to write always in the direction of the X axis. So I'm going to place it somewhere around here with the Z axis pointing up and the X axis in this direction. I'm going to right click in my base plate and then select manual engraving. And in this case, I'm just going to place here a logo of Senate. We click on the empty. So this is very useful when you have to mark your different fixtures to recognize which one is which. And one thing also is that we see some of this uh, engraving that comes by default uh, can be a little bit large sometimes. So one more thing that we can do is we can go into our fixture parameters, engraving, and then we can change this total height for something more small, like let's say five millimeters in here. And now we're gonna get a tiny engraving that is uh, enough to read it, but it's not occupying so much space. Um, we still want to make sure that this is not gonna get stuck once it's welded. So we want to add reliefs all over the part. To do this, I'm gonna go again to my um, fixture parameters. Then I'm gonna go into the category of relief. I'm gonna disable this process geometry relief and enable the corner relief detection. And the relief size I'm gonna put here is gonna be five millimeters. Then I'm gonna recalculate. And this is gonna find every single corner and automatically find a relief and create a relief everywhere where the part might get stuck. You can make them bigger with the parameter that I show you, and you can also modify them or delete them if you not, not need them in some cases. It's also very useful when you have some corners and you do not want to support the fixture directly in the corners, but only in the flat surfaces. In my parameters, I'm gonna check again the weight reduction, and I'm gonna minimize the distance to the boundaries for everything here. So I can uh, have a little bit more weight reduction. So I'm gonna put 20 millimeters for all of the boundaries and I'm gonna recompute. This will be enough to support our fixture. One more thing that we have to do with our fixture is uh, we have other these stops. We need to connect them. I'm gonna go into the utility section. I'm gonna bring my manipulator, drag it and drop it in the frames that we have for each one of these uh, clamp stops. And then I'm gonna right click and then select new mechanical parent adapter. And I'm gonna do this for all of the clamps that we have just added. So one, two, three, four. And what this does is if we go quickly to the drag and snap mode, um, we have the fixture and the workpiece is connected, but the different clamp stops, they need to be connected manually. So I will add them this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. And now it also connected together. I'm going to go into my micro environment of create nesting. Then I'm going to move this manipulator a little bit outside of here. And I'm going to right click in the center of the manipulator and then select create nesting. This is going to unfold the whole fixture and it's going to give us all the cuts that we need to manufacture a base plate, all the support plates, um, the clamp towers with all the holes and everything that we need here to create this fixture. I'm going to then save it. So uh, you can go into your file, file manager. In this case, for the demonstration, I'm gonna save my fixture so I can right click, then save us. I'm gonna save my fixture. And I also have to save this work piece that we created at the beginning. The nesting you do not necessarily need to save. If you wanna manufacture this, you can actually use this command in here to save the nesting and you can save this nesting as a DXF then you can import directly into your cutting machine. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my library, cells, Cells. and we have one project here that is already waiting for us and we're gonna program our workpiece. So I'm just gonna right click and then open this project. We're not gonna save this document. And here we have our cupboard welding station. Here we can add our fixture and our workpiece, put it together over the table, simply with a drag and snap. And we can start using our swipe functionality to create all the words around the piece. I'm not gonna go too into deep and how to do this, 
because we have plenty of demonstrations and how to do this specifically for offline programming, we can do pretty much whatever you want with the rope, changing configurations, modifying positions, inserting new points, creating collision sets so we can verify collisions, uh, change the configuration of the parameters for the welding setup. And we can of course use the higher functionality like the automatic uh, linking part optimization in this case for creating collision free paths automatically. And we have the possibility to see um, that everything is within reach. Uh, and if we have to modify something on the fixture or we need to change anything, it is all available here, integrated in one software, fixture builder and offline programming. So I hope you like the demonstration. Think about the possibilities you get with this. Going not only with offline programming, but taking the part, building a fixture, either for manual welding or for robotic welding, taking into account tolerances, taking into account reachability. And this is something that FastWity2 is uniquely equipped to help you with your day-to-day -day work. So stay tuned. We have more demonstrations for you, but if you have any questions, please come to us. We're always happy to help you. And we will also be very satisfied if you start trying the new fixture builder of FastWity Edition 2.